what should we talk about, you guys? Ask me anything. We can talk about anything. We can talk about, well, anything that I know about. Can't talk about stuff I don't know about. I don't like to do that. Oh, you're sweet, Khalil. Thanks. You know, for those of you who don't know, Khalil means a uh, best friend. Or you can say close, intimate friend, uh, int uh, intimate companion. But if you're going like, if you're going to go slang, like Khalil means like BFF, Ace Boon Coon. So one of the things that um, Allah has said about Nabi uh, Ibrahim, or if you're a Christian, one of the things that God said to Abraham was uh, he, ca he called him his friend, right? So you have all these gospel songs by Israel Houghton. I am a friend of God, right? So uh, you'll see the same thing in the Quran. And this, uh, this is why it bothers me that people are like, you worship a different God. And I'm like, no, you just don't know enough about the history of your God. But um, you'll see Khalil Allah, right? You see the word Khalil, and then you see the suffix Allah. So close, intimate friend of God, right? So there were two Nabis or two prophets, uh, blessings and peace be upon all the prophets, who were given that station uh, with the creator. And one was Abraham, and the other one was Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So um, Jesus uh, in the Quran is called Kalam Allah, right? Kalam means speech, right? Kalam means speech and it also means word. It means all things, you know, Arabic words are always, they have these, these multi meanings. The meanings are similar, but multi meanings. So if you translate that, it's like um, in English, we would say something like the word of God, right? So um, there's a song uh, by, by uh, Fred Hammond. Bread of life, sent down from glory. Many things you are on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, right? So the Bible and the Quran both acknowledge uh, Isa ibn Maryam. So in English, that would be Jesus, the son of Mary. It acknowledges Isa ibn Maryam as a word that came from God, right? So when Jabril or Gabriel, angel Gabriel, comes to Mary and he basically breathes uh, a, a breath of life, basically, into Mary. And she has this divine conception with uh, Nabi Isa or who you call Jesus. OK, so um, and also the things that came from him, like the gospel, right? Um, in Arabic, it's Injil and in gospel translated in English means good news, like like good news. <laughs> this is how you get salvation. This is how you save your soul, right? So um, there are so many much more like similarities and differences when it comes to Islam and Christianity. The Muslims and Christians have more in common than Jews and Christians. And it always like perturbs me. It's like, I mean, first of all, the three are related, right? Jews and Christians trace their lineage back to the God through Isaac, the son of Abraham and Muslims trace their lineage back to the creator through Ishmael, right? Ismail, if you're Muslim, Ishmael, if you are Christian or Jewish, right? So there are all these things about, oh, well, you guys, we don't worship the same God, blah, blah, blah. I remember I was being taken to the airport um, by this Uber driver and he wanted to like, you know, Christian me to pieces. Um, Let's see. Oh, you have to get back to work. Okay. Hey, my green eyes. Right. Abrahamic faiths. And of course, Abrahamic because it's Father Abraham, right? The, the father, right? So what a lot of Christians don't, don't know is that like Muslims, we face Northeast when we pray. And uh, that is the direction of what we're calling the Qibla. Qibla means direction, but it's the direction of what you guys are calling a black box. 
but that was actually the first house of prayer built by Abraham and Ishmael. So Abraham literally had his hands on those bricks in mortar. So him, his sons, like when people are talking about Mecca and Medina and Israel and Palestine, you're literally talking about holy land. You're literally talking land that major prophets have walked on because uh, the Islamic belief is that every group of people has had a prophet or a messenger. Every group of people. Because God is not going to judge you by a standard until it's delivered to you, right? Uh, we, we believe in a God that is merciful. So, um but it's just interesting to note that like um, this Christian was trying to Christian me to death and I'm just sitting there like, I try so hard to be polite, but I'm just like, bro, I led a Bible study for most of my Christian life, okay? In my high school and at my college. Like, I don't know what you think you're gonna teach me. Like, and it wasn't just like, oh, I'm a Bible study leader because I'm, you know, on fire for Christ. It was like, nah, this is my concordance. These are my six or seven different translations of the Bible. This is my Greek. Bible, this is my blue Hebrew letter Bible. Like, I don't want to have a conversation with you unless you've studied. Like, my partner is a super Christian, but him and I can have these rich conversations because he is a person who has studied apologetics. He is a person who has studied the epistles. He's a person who has gone back through biblical history, this and that. I mean, to the point where, you know, anything you ask him, like, he can vibe with you on, you know, the Torah. He can vibe with you on uh, the book of Ezra. He can vibe with you on, you know, what's that thing called? Talmud, right? He can vibe with you on all of that. He can have a conversation with you about all of that because he's knowledgeable of all of that. But some of these like everyday Christians, they'll be like, oh, you're a Muslim. That's too bad. Let me save your soul. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> so the guy who was taking me to the airport the last time I had an airport video, basically what he was saying to me was, uh, Allah and Elohim are different. And Christians have a concept of Elohim, but they don't have a concept of Allah. And I was just like, you know, that's just a language barrier, right? Because in reality, Jesus spoke Aramaic.